Hi everyone, my name is Chuan Song and today I'll be presenting on my final year project, Effects of Incremental Training on Remark Neural Networks. This will be the table of contents for today. First, I'll be going through the objective and scope of my study. This is to discuss the problems with the current watermarking schemes to highlight the importance of my study. Secondly, we'll be looking into experimental procedures carried out in my study. Next, we'll be discussing on the important findings through the course of my experiments. And finally, we'll be talking about some possible future works and recommendations I have. Do note that this presentation will be kept short and succinct. And if you'd like to find out more, please feel free to check my paper out on NTU's digital repository. Without further ado, let's start the presentation. Before we get into it, I'd like to give a short visual representation of why the study is important. Imagine there's a guy named Bob who has vast knowledge in the realm of machine learning and creates his own neural network for a classification problem. This is a groundbreaking creation and he'd like to create a form of ownership identification for his neural network to protect his intellectual property rights, something we call a watermarking scheme. Hence, he creates one in order to watermark his neural network. This watermark is special such that it can never be replicated and it serves the purpose for a Bob to identify a network that is stolen from him. Because of the demand for highly performing neural network models, Bob decides to profit out of his expertise. He starts to copy the repeater at a low cost as compared to the cost of training such a model, but with a contractual agreement. The contract states that Peter will be able to perform incremental training on it to improve the accuracy to suit his own needs, but he is not supposed to distribute it. Even though the contract forbids illegal distribution, what truly protects Bob's intellectual property rights is actually the watermarking scheme itself. As part of the contractual agreement, Peter is allowed to do incremental training to suit his own needs. Incremental training refers to training a model with newly acquired data to improve the model accuracy. But what we don't know currently is how Bob's watermarking scheme is affected by incremental training. Will the watermarks persist after incremental training, or will it fade away, which could pose a threat to Bob's intellectual property rights as seen here. If Peter distributes the model outside of his contractual agreement, Bob wouldn't be able to verify upon looking at the stolen models anymore. The aforementioned is a rough depiction of the uncertainty revolving watermarking schemes when it comes to incremental training. This affects something known as machine learning as a service, which is when companies distribute pre-trained neural network models as a form of business. If incremental training removes watermarks which serves as a medium for ownership verification, it will threaten MLAS directly. This is why my study on the effects of incremental training on watermark neural networks is of utmost importance. Next, I'll be talking about how the experiments of my study were carried out. My experiment consists of four main phases as seen here. The first phase is the data preparation, where I will first split the data into three main portions, the incremental set, train set, and the trigger set. The incremental set will be saved for incremental training in phase 3, while the train set and trigger set will be mixed and used for training in phase 2. Trigger sets are defined as specially created data that can be used to provide ownership verification. They are typically kept secret from the public. For my study, I focus on three main trigger set types. Adversarial samples, unrelated samples, and also randomly mislabeled samples. In phase two, we'll be using the mixture of train and trigger set to train a neural network model. This is to emulate the creation of a neural network model before distribution with watermarks fully embedded. The watermarking schemes considered in my experiments consist of rollback, or uniform watermarking scheme, randomized moving scheme, and the original backdoor scheme. And onto phase 3 is the part where we emulate the incremental training done by clients. And finally, in phase 4, we will then evaluate the persistence of watermarks, which will show a watermarking scheme's suitability for incremental training. Next, we'll be looking into some key insights from my study. There are three main findings that I'd like to share in my presentation. Number one is that incremental training is detrimental towards the persistence of watermarks. This means that the more incremental training is done, the more likely the watermarks would fade. Number two, false uniform distribution of watermarks that were used in some of the schemes that were studied in my experiments is detrimental towards incremental training. Number three, there are some variables that would affect the persistence of such watermarks, such as learning rate of the incremental training and trigger set types for the watermarks. But what largely ensures the persistence is the scheme itself. Last but not least, let's go into the conclusion portion where I will also discuss about some possible future studies and recommendations. In conclusion, incremental training is an important part of watermarking neural networks and should be a major variable to consider for robust watermarking schemes. And here are some possible areas of study that I recommend. Number 1. Incorporating locking of specific layers for a watermarking scheme. The area of uniform distribution of watermarks which required locking of all layers was an extremely brilliant one that must steer us in the right path. 
it might be worthwhile to consider locking only certain key layers instead of all of it. Number two, the study has only been done on classification models and the possible enhancement would be to scale the study into the realms of regression or even forecasting models. Number three, the experiments conducted were mostly done with CIFA-10 datasets and I recommend scaling the study into datasets such as CINIC-10, ImageNet or even Visual Genome. Number four, the experiments were all conducted on the ResNet architecture and future works could involve expanding that into the other networks such as efficient net or vision transformer models. This marks the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time. And please remember, if you'd like to find out more about my study, please feel free to find my paper on NTU's digital repository. Thank you.